In Chi, I have to appreciate uh, our administrative team and our chairman here, and brought me to all the way from 12 years ago to here, hired me to here, and give so much support. Now, and I work with uh, uh, Shannon for 12 years, helped me to promote all this surgery, everything. So otherwise, no one know me. <laughs> but then we have a wonderful pelvic pain team here. Without land, I cannot do anything, basically. We have to refer all these patients to land. They give us too much support. And actually, when you go to endometriosis uh, topic, you know it's not only one surgeon can do anything. So you have to have team. So I'm so glad today we have a great team. So we're going to work and work for our, all our patients. So when chronic pelvic pain endometriosis, initial, when Shannon told me well, uh, how many minutes to talk, she told me that 10 to 15 minutes. I said, OK. I look at my PowerPoint, it's 60 slides. <laughs> I was planning in 60 slides in 15 minutes. So <laughs> then I cut down to 40, 40 slides. Then I cut down to 30 slides. Then yesterday, I talked to her. She said, oh, I said, OK. I'm going to cut down to 15 to or 12, but I still keep 15. You got so much information. Any topic, any endometriosis can be one. OK, why endometriosis so much topics? Because endometriosis can go anywhere. I still remember when I went to do my fellowship application interview, one of pioneer endometriosis surgeons, Dr. Sine Nazar, in Georgia. So he asked today, who come for interview can know which organ, no endometriosis happen. Then you're going to be hired. No interview anymore. Always, I failed. No one know. So that time, there's no case report in spring. There's only organ, no case report. Actually, now have uh, reported too. Basic endometriosis can go to any organs. You see that? Any organs can give a one of, uh, topic, can give a talk. So that's why this is the, how it goes. I just go today, and I go to very quickly. Actually, we have a, a one of a section with the, our patients, uh, Houston Endometriosis Society group. They are here too. We have a tea talk. That time we focus on infertility. So today we're going to focus on why you go to see specialist. Why you go, why you need to just go somewhere looking for something, or you need to really need a specialist, and why this surgery is kind of very important if you not go to specialist looking for. So obviously today is the pelvic pain, right? So pelvic pain in the endometriosis is the sister and brother. And basically it's the, we talk about a little bit about uh, chronic pelvic pain. It's a six months above. This is based on ACOT. It's in the pelvic, or basically they, they consider it's lower umbilicus. So, but basically if on diaphragm, it's chest pain, but it still belongs to endometriosis too. And uh, you see that all the back and uh, sometimes can, because go to the nerve, can cause the pain too. So that's three things very frustrating. So difficult to diagnose, difficult to treat, difficult to cure. So frustration for patient and physician. From patient's part, right, it's just, okay, I go so see so many physicians and never come out to, to what's the diagnosis? And then they said, sometimes we're going to have a picture later on. So for a physician, so you, you guys maybe don't know, you guys want to know, right? So how physician referred endometriosis to me? So then physician, one of our couple of faculties here, said, oh, you do uh, endometriosis surgery or treat endometriosis. Patient is yours, so I don't want to. I don't want to touch the. That's how frustrated. If you're not treated well, you not solve the problem. Pain still persistent. That's why they they so frustrated. And there's a, I don't know what it's a point. Though. This is the picture how you pain from the patient, right? This is the pain that she's a she's a patient. How you describe her pain? You see, you from this picture also get frustrated, right? you get to the self-image distortion. So this is all pelvic pain and endometriosis can bring to our society, to patients and to the physicians. So I'm so glad they already went through all this. So basically for the pelvic, if one of the 
uh, someone come to my office and ask that I have pelvic pain. So what I'm looking for, so basically we're looking for, it is automatic play. So we're looking for all this part, GI, GU, and uh, muscular, and uh, urological, because we, it's so great, they went through already. So pelvic pain, so surprise. A lot of people think about this pelvic pain must be endometriosis number one. Actually, it's not. From this slide, you can, you can tell. This is a GI is the 30, <laughs> sorry, 37.7. And urinary, is like Dr. O'Hara talking about, is 30.8. Gynecological, only 20%. In this 20%, 25 to 50% female have, have chronic pelvic pain, have multiple organs, basically multiple systems involved. And basically everything is different if you have a multiple organ involved. That's why one patient come to me if they think about endometriosis, have pelvic floor muscle pain. I normally tell patients your pain more severe than other people. However, we're going to address your pelvic pain from endometriosis. Most time, this pain can be like eight to ten. So then, pelvic floor muscle pain is around four to five. We go back when we treat the severe pain. Then go back to the uh, central physical therapy Sarah layer to do the. Uh, pelvic floor muscle pain. Why? Because there's a patient, they do opposite way. So they go to do physical therapy first. What happened, right? They say, oh, it's failed. Right? Because you still have pain, eight out of 10, how can you, how can you know it? five, right? So that's why we need to address the most severe pain first. So we go back. So most common diagnosis is still endometriosis from this pelvic pain, because a lot of GI pain, they're not looking for physicians, they're not going to see anyone. So what's endometriosis? Endometriosis definition we have to, since this lecture about. So basically, this layer called endometrial tissue, uh, endometrial layer. So this, if this layer outside anywhere, in the uterine ward, so we call adenomyosis, uh, Dr. Cawthon talked about. So if on the ovary, endometrioma, it's on the, on the fallopian tube. Even you can, in the vulva, let's case report, in the vulva, it can cause vulvodynia too. So obviously diaphragm, all kind of locations. So you see that, basic why endometriosis causes pain, can, uh, Dr. O'Hara talking about nerve distribution and refraction and everything. And also inflam inflammation is one of big things. And pain is can, all kind of location. So this made the surgery and uh, treatment and the diagnosis is so difficult because it can evolve anywhere and almost all organs. The reason, so, so many patients come to my office and said, Dr. Guang, what's the reason? So, okay, we can give list of reasons. So laundry list, right? Symptoms, retrograde menstruation, uh, like a blood uh, spread and the lymphatic spread and the stem cell, genetic, an immune factor. So if we give laundry a list, it means what? So when you have a kind of disease, if you have a specific treatment, it's the best because you can cure it. So if you have all kind of lists, you don't know what's the reason, it means treatment is difficult. So this has come out. No single theory span all cases of endometriosis. This made endometriosis like a kind of dilemma, right? Everyone, why looking for? We turn, uh, in here, I want to uh, appreciate all the patients support our research. In Baylor, we have uh, tons of, uh, from molecular biology and from pathology department, they do tons of endometriosis research. And actually, these couple of years, endometriosis research in, already bring up top to all kinds of research. It, before, it's all about cancer, but now, so endometriosis research coming back. This is great news for and the mature society. Hopefully we find something that can help. And this is a big one. So who should screening for endometriosis by an expert? So we kind of go into this kind of couple of things because of pelvic pain, right? So persistent severe pelvic pain during the periods and it's not controlled by the overcome medication. So you take some motoring, no, no work. So persistent pain. So you, you should look into it. 
You should look in, if you go to other physicians, other physicians say no, you should look into uh, experts to evaluate you. And pain during your periods, and progress to non-period related pain. So initially your pain or during the period pain. So this then is not, not in the period you have pain. So you should look into why. So, and basically we, this is based on the three major uh, uh, basic symptom from the endometriosis. One is infertility. So then we're uh, talking about pelvic pain and infertility one, right? If you have pelvic pain plus infertility, you're not easy to get pregnant. So majority of the time, you need to look for endometriosis. So then a lot of people ask, how many patients have uh, endometriosis? So in theory, 10% so of uh, reproductive age. Can you imagine how many patients? everywhere, just in Houston, right? We have two million in city. So you see, can you imagine we ha need how many, how many physicians and the experts to taking care of endometriosis patients, just for the 10%. So then, if pelvic pain and family history of underlying causes of endometriosis. So this has come up with the, some story about, like mom said, okay, I have endometriosis surgery with you. And he said, oh, my, my daughter have, uh, period pain or non-period pain, you should come to see you or not. And then I normally ask a couple questions. So if it's the pain, it's severe pain, based on the first one, then if pain, second one is not in the period, I said you should have, because you're possible because genetic reason. And so what's the youngest patient, I, I don't know other physician done, myself has done a diagnosis and endometriosis is 14 year old. And actually she is a model. So I still remember she's very tall and came to me and and I would say I cannot cannot do anything because she said her mom brought the faction magazine, her daughter on the top page, said you cannot destroy it here anywhere. <laughs> Otherwise and with it's a good thing I do single size surgery. <laughs> I did the single size good. So this is the youngest one. So we published for that. So if you have a patient comes here, and not every, every location they taking care of uh, uh, pediatric adolescent, it means age, uh, le less than 18 or 21 year old. And we have a team here, we, we all taking care of kids. So this is about uh, genetics. So it's broke into a big spectrum. So we have a genetic, another one is uh, we are twin. So, and sister have a bowel resection, 19 year old, Another sister comes here for stage three endometriosis, exactly twin. So that's why this is all, all genetic related. And then the, the other big symptoms when you have a, a pain during intercourse. So our pain is different with the, the cons pain. So I normally ask patients when you have sexual pain, if, if you separate vagina, is the one third outside in the middle or uh, deep in uh, one third in the deep. Deep part. So if in the outside, I send to <laughs> the account. In the middle, I send to Sarah for <laughs> PT. Okay, then I'm very happy. I say, okay, it's not my business. <laughs> so, but if it's a uh, uh, last deep one, I say, oh, damn, it's my part now. <laughs> so let's, uh, let's uh, keep point, give some idea. So endometriosis is more related to uh, deep pelvic, uh, sexual pain. So last one, pain from your head. So how many of you, or if you have pelvic pain, go to physician, then they did some surgery, and then at the end they say, okay, I don't know. Then maybe they, they did not tell you, they just said, maybe from your head. So I think a lot of patients come to my office. And so first, some patients cry, start crying, and just because when I tailor history, do the full pelvic exam, and I said you have big chance. You maybe have 85 to 90 percent. You have endometriosis. They start crying. They said, she's, "I went to all the primary care, and I went to the uh, general OBGYN, and I went to yeah many many times." Everyone said, oh, "Okay, I did the imaging study. Nothing. Go home." Then after multiple multiple times, you get in, it's kind of annoyed, right? The same physician, they say, oh my God, this is, you're crazy. So this is kind of pain from your head. It's, it's not true. 
it's not all in your head. This is why I bring these pictures. So it's I basically for psychiatrists, I send to psychiatrists, not for the because your pain, psycho psychological cause in the pain. We send to psychiatrists because you get depression because of this. So it's a different, not for your head. You really have pain. So as a, it's a good thing we have a team here. All our team, obviously, we all believe you have pain. So it just made the physician believe you have pain. It's already very difficult. Then get you to diagnosis and surgery. That's why I need a special training. So diagnosis, pain, not all your from, from your head, again. So very important, uh, clinical history and exam. So for the pelvic exam, uh, Dr. Koi is going to talk about we do the, the rectal exam because a lot of time endometriosis involved about. So when we do the rectal exam, sometimes we say, oh, that's bad news because we feel a nodule, then we need a colorectal surgeon. Sometimes we can even predict you sometimes need a colostomy or not. So that's how bad endometriosis can involve. And blood test, and always it's nothing work for well for initially all talking about CA125 but not working at all. Imaging study is very, very important for us. And majority of the time, imaging study is mapping is, is basically negative. So we use the imaging study with this year, and a lot of patients maybe know our, we call endometriosis imaging study. Basically, we put, the, uh, we put uh, some of the gel in the vagina and rectum as contracts, and then give IV contrast. It's like a, a double contrast, and really, really can delineate sometimes adhesions and stage three and four endometriosis and bowel endometriosis. Like this morning, and a patient comes here, his first visit. So she, we, we did a surgery, we did the MI. MI showed us she had endometriosis on the cervix and the bowel. And actually, it just predicts some, because in the cervix and bowel attached to cervix, I sent to colorectal surgeon. So obviously, she had a two location of bowel, uh, endometriosis have to shave uh, one location have to do the disc resection the other one have to do the bowel uh, resection then we remove she had adenomyosis we remove uterus she finished childbearing anyway then she had a big nodule sitting on the uh, right we call a paravaginal space and that's her pain her persistent hip pain and the leg pain so I hope this surgery is going to help you Help her. So this is talking about how important this imaging study for us because uh, we need a multiple uh, specialty to involve. And so laparoscopic surgery is still a gold standard. So appearance. So the reason why a lot of uh, uh, patients go to see other physicians, they do the diagnosis, and they find out it, this is not endometriosis. And but. The reason why some of endometriosis is a typical one. So if it's the uh, black powder burn, we're joking about this is really, really the, if a monkey can do a diagnosis because this is very typical, right? It's a black powder burn. But if like clear cell, uh, clear a typical and the peritoneal window, hypervascularity, and red even better. So brown is good too. But this under three is a lot of people just ignore it. So we're not going to spend time for this video. If someone wants to watch the video in the YouTube, there's a, they, actually from Nancy's look, they, once a while Nancy post there, have uh, 87,000 uh, view. I think it's most from patient too. So you can, you can know what's inside myself. So at least uh, next time if the, you see the picture, someone give you diagnosis, oh, let's end up. So <laughs> you miss it. So for the physician education. So all, all the physicians not know, not because so I think it's a lack of education. Because you see, when we're doing the resident training, really resident not go through all this training too much. That's the that's the education problem. But resident have so much training, it's very difficult to train everything. So endometriosis really, really now get to the subspecialized very well. And our fellowship in the age of we call American Laparoscopic Society, now on, almost like 60% focus on endometriosis. So management, so hormonal therapy. 
So based on the, all this endometriosis uh, organization, still suggestion before and after surgery. Always a lot of my patients hate it, so about all this the hormonal therapy. If hormonal therapy, obviously, if it causes your side effect, you should not do it. But if you can tolerate it, you suggestion you should do it. Because can, it cannot cure the endometriosis, but can prevent or decrease the, all these endometrial symptoms. And then sec, second one, surgery, complete resection. And uh, for the third one, after surgery, we still recommend long-term medical uh, treatment and uh, physical therapies. So med medication, we not go through so much. First one, if for my disease, you just go get take them motoring and transition. You, at the end, you possibly need a surgery or an other treatments. So oral contraceptive is a big, big one. So we, we basically like the progesterone only because estrogen we still consider is the nutrition for endometriosis. We just we like only this one progesterone only. So this GnRH or Orisa new medication, this is a new one, but they, they, this is medication work well, and but have a lot of side effects. A lot of patients they cannot tolerate. We even we use the at bed therapies. So this is a uh, medical treatment for the surgery. So let's two surgery. One is the laparoscopic and uh, robotic surgery, obviously. No one do open surgery for endometriosis anymore because the, we find out if you do open surgery, you miss endometriosis more than, because naked eye you cannot see. And robotic surgery is magnified, laparoscopic is magnified. So that's why you can see the small atypical lesion well. So then that's the one of everyone talking about, right? A lot of patients say, why is the burning, abrasion? So burning, so only can work for stage one and two, superficial one. Then you see the follow-up, short-term follow-up, six months, and it's the same as the incision surgery if you burn it well. And then if you, after a while, 20 months, less than two years, 74% of chance coming back, only 26% cure. So in two years. So then the other ones, we cut it off. So the reason why, because you see, first, if endometriosis is on the bowel, who's going to burn the bowel, right? You're not going to burn the bowel. And, uh, and the endometriosis on the ureter, on top of the ureter, you're not going to burn it, right? You, you know it's going to burn the ureter. So this only way it's treated is you remove it. So then for the endometriosis, you remove it, and it's, uh, you see the seven years post up, 57, seven years, this is two years. So seven years, 57% cure rate. This is the number I told my patient, uh, recurrent rate. It's a, uh, basic is, uh, 30, 30, around 30 to 40% uh, chance recurrent rate. So this is just give you some idea of uh, what surgery. So this, uh, Dr. Cotton already talked about, this is how I initially want to give surprise, but I do like not much. So this is how we do the surgery, because how we do, I personally, prefer robotic surgery because uh, for endometriosis, sometimes surgery can be very prolonged. So, and uh, this is the um, robotic have its benefits. Not only benefit for a physician, you can see better and you can see the, a lot of delicate surgery and the very complex surgery. And also multiple team, we all do robotic surgeon, surgery now. So, and we appreciate our administrator. We, we just get a second robot now. <laughs> so we have a lot of, uh, low box here and can help uh, endometriosis patients. So this is a still more research done about uh, endometriosis incision surgery. So this is how we incision, we remove all the suspicious. You see the full, this look like butterfly removal. So basically it's any atypical, typical and everything. If extensive, we do it. But if only one or two spots or very minimal, we do, do that, we call focal resection. But if a lot of endometriosis, we remove it. And this is the one, I, my personal feeling is a good care for the patient, uh, for pelvic pain endometriosis. So we need to go to the place. You know, if you want to go anywhere, you should have a strong multiple disciplinary surgical team. This surgical team, not just team, we grab someone come to do it. Like, like our team is dedicated to endometriosis, to pelvic pain. 
This is very, very important. You see, we have our Colorado surgeon, so they train it. So I think they even advertise his endometriosis surgeon. So urologist, we have our urologist help us doing the surgery from more than 10 years. And thoracic surgeon. So initially they said, oh, he's not enough training. He even, I, I think he already went to the Georgia to one of place doing a lot of thoracic surgery. So to train him, self-training for endometriosis in thoracic. So this is how we dedicate him. I think this is the, a lot of place they cannot have. They just go there, okay, I do the surgery, I put a scope in, oh, sorry, I, I see something, I left some on, on, the, on the ureter, I left some on the bowel. Because I think that's good things, they don't do it in, in compromise, and they, if they don't know what to do, and send to us. But let's, the, let's we're talking about how this surgery is so compressed. I think this still a dedicated team is very, very important for us. And uh, for the surgeons, we have uh, all our teams here, Dr. Nassif, Dr. Corithon, we all, and myself, we, I, we did a fellowship training. I did my fellowship at Baylor too. We all do endometriosis training. So why? Because fellowship training uh, program give, you see, if you do endometriosis surgery for maybe two, two or three months, or we do it almost like, a, like, sometimes we do like six surgery a week. So if you're training under six surgery a week, always you see everything, right? Up to training, you good taking care of patients. And the most, most important, this uh, endometrial surgery, you need a high skill. It's not just, just burn it, touch, and then on a ureter and skip it. So you have to have no deal with the bladder, ureter, and the bowel. So this, this, that's why this is the very, very important need of training. Obviously, before we do not have fellowship training, a lot of senior attending, they're very good in endometriosis. They self-training into. But now we have a fellowship training. I think it's much faster, and we can uh, bring up a lot of uh, experts here. And the post-operative post care, so physical therapies, we very relied on them. And now I routinely send a lot of patients to, after three months after surgery, sent to PD, uh, physical therapy. And we just talk about pain management. Hopefully in the future we have pain management. This is another big component for us. And bladder. So Dr. O, we, we send a lot of patients. So he's he going to be busy for this IC too. Because when we evaluate, we evaluate all. And the GI, we send to beta GI. And another one, if you do endometriosis, endometriosis is such complex surgery uh, uh, diagnosis. If you really suspicious or anything, you should ask second opinions. You say, okay, any other physician, if this is pain. Sometimes I, I don't know, multiple times I cannot take care of the pain. I even refer it to someone else and see, and they can send to. But obviously, sometimes they, we refer out, they send back again. You say, you, we do the same thing, no different, why you send me? But still good to have a second opinion in case we miss something. Okay, thank you all, thank you again.